Welcome to Christ Supreme Ministry, the House of Restoration. We invite you to worship with us and receive the Spirit-filled message as we hear from the Lord. God bless you as you listen, in Jesus' name. God will bless us mightily in Jesus name. Please quickly uh, send a text uh, to your friends, your family, your neighbors and also send them the link and let them join us tonight as we go to phase two of our program tonight. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Eternal King of glory, everlasting Father. Father, we thank you Lord for this wonderful opportunity Lord to be in your presence. 
thank you, Lord, for the grace for day two of fasting and praying. Thank you, Lord, for strengthening us. Holy Spirit, divine Lord, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand this day. We ask you, Lord, help us as we come into your presence tonight to pray. Let all prayers, Lord, come back with testimonies, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Give us understanding, Lord, of all that be taught tonight in the name of Jesus. Everyone that's supposed to be on this meeting, we pray, Lord, that you will quicken them, you will remind them. And bring them online, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray concerning the transmission of this program, Lord. I pray, Lord, that the transmission will be smooth. And every home, every place, everybody is listening to me at this hour. The presence of the Lord will be with you. And you shall be richly blessed in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens over this meeting open and remain open in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit divine. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I welcome us to day two of our program tonight. And as we started yesterday, and the theme for those people that are just joining us uh, for the first time, the theme of our study uh, for these seven days is annulled and overruled. Annulled and overruled. Judgment of perdition. And this is what we are going to look at uh, in the remaining days. And uh, the video will still be available. And we can always go back and listen to it. Let me say this, people of God. It, it takes spiritual understanding. It takes spiritual revelation and insight for you to really grab the full gist, the full understanding of this thing. But I pray that the Lord of our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, we enlighten you. We open your eyes of understanding. You'll be able to grab the full understanding of this thing in Jesus' name. So tonight, by the grace of God, we are going to continue from where we stopped yesterday. Uh, we studied from the book of Jeremiah, uh, chapter 37. So we read up to 1 to 15 yesterday. But today, by the grace of God, we are going to continue from verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 37 from verse 16 to 21. Let's have it on the board for everybody at home, please. Please turn your Bible with me to Jeremiah chapter 37 from verse 16 uh, to verse 21. And I read, hallelujah. When Jeremiah entered the dungeon and into the cabins, and Jeremiah had remained there many days, then Zedekiah, the king, sent and took him out, as the king asked him secretly in his house, and said, Is there any word from the Lord? And Jeremiah said, There is. For said he, Thou shalt be delivered into the hands of king of Babylon. Moreover, Jeremiah said to king Zedekiah, what have I offended against thee, or against thy servants, or against these people, that they have put me in prison? Now, where are now your prophets, which prophesied unto you, saying, The king of Babylon shall not come against you, nor against this land? Hallelujah. In verse 20. Therefore, hear now, I pray thee, O my Lord, the King, let my supplication, I pray thee, be accepted before thee, that thou cause me not to return to the house of Jonathan, the scribe, lest I die there. Uh, the last verse now, hallelujah. So, then the king commanded that they should commit Jeremiah into the court of the prison, and they should give him a daily piece of bread after the baker's street, until all the bread in the city was spent. Thus, Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, we want to thank God for the passage that we have read, and for those of us uh, that were with that were with us with us yesterday, we we'll remember. That uh, from the beginning, Zedekiah, the king of Judah, 
the Bible says, together with his team, they did not give heed to the warning that prophet Jeremiah gave them. The Lord sent several messages uh, to King Zedekiah about how they should behave, but they did not listen to that. Prophet Jeremiah had prophesied that the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, were going to come and take them captive. But Zedekiah, together with his prophet, they said, no, it's not going to happen. So Zedekiah formed an accord with Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Zedekiah uh, abandoned God. He wasn't listening to God. Rather, he looked for a connection, an association with the arm of flesh. So the Egyptians, I mean, came. And because uh, uh, the Babylonians were already laid siege against them in Jerusalem. But as soon as the uh, Pharaoh army came, the Chaldeans, the Babylonians, they left. So Zedekiah together with his prophet and all the Judah, they celebrated. They thought that it was all over. However, the Lord sent Jeremiah to them that this is not over. And let it be known that the Egyptians that you trusted in so much, they are going to go back to their country. And the Babylonians are going to come back and they're going to put you into captivity. They are going to burn the old city. They are going to take you, Zedekiah King, as captive. They are going to take you there. So because of that, as we read yesterday, they accused uh, uh, Jeremiah that he wanted to deflect that he was actually working with their enemy and because of that he was apprehended he was arrested and they put him into jail so that was what we studied yesterday so today let's continue from there from today the king now went secretly as we read we can go to verse 16 now the king went secretly and after they have put jeremiah into the dungeon in fact it will require rope to bring out Jeremiah from where they dumped it. It was as if they put him in a well, but there was no water in it. So they lowered him all the way down by himself. So in verse 17, the king went to him and sent people to bring him out. So they brought Jeremiah out and the king asked of him, Jeremiah, please tell me. Did the Lord say anything? Is there any other word from God to me? And Jeremiah said, yes. The Lord indeed had spoken again. And he said, what is it again? And he said, yeah, this is what the Lord said. That thou shall be delivered to the hand of the Babylon. So he told the king again. That the same thing that the Lord has said from the beginning. That's what the Lord said again. That you and your people are going to be taken down. And they are going to put you into prison so after that jeremiah he cried unto the king in, uh, in verse 18 jeremiah asked question in verse 18 jeremiah said unto the king what have i done wrong what have i offended against thee what is my offense why did you guys put me in prison why did you put me in the dungeon what exactly have i done either to you as the king or to your people or to the princes but there was no explanation so jeremiah pleaded please don't leave me here i don't want to die don't leave me here so the king ordered him to be put in the in the inner court of the prison so they took him out of the dungeon but they still kept him in another prison which is a little bit better not that it was the best but they put him in the court of the prison so this was what we studied I and mean, this is what we read today how they removed it but let me say this uh people of god let me say this what brought jeremiah into prison it was because he was doing he did the work of god he was a prophet of god yes he always warned them told them the truth but because he was the prophet of god they didn't like most of his prophecies because it wasn't lying to him so that was what took him there now today 
uh, by the grace of God. Remember yesterday when we studied, when we started, we said our focus, our focus was on how Jeremiah was wrongfully accused. So we we'll put our focus on that. But today, like I said, every day we're going to look at different aspects of this theme annulled and overruled yes the judgment of perdition so today we want to focus on one thing and i want us to pay attention at uh, that thing that we need to pay attention to tonight that i want to focus on is called stigmatization stigmatization uh, what is this all about when we spiritually speaking when we are talking about stigmatization we are talking about a situation whereby yes the, 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 the people in the coven powers and principalities they put an endless they put an endless spiritual project in people's life that that person will continue to focus on the challenge on the situation on the matter that has been placed upon him once the coven come together and they put a judgment on somebody they put something on him that become a lifetime project they put something on that person that the person will be focusing on in the context of the passage you have we have read jeremiah was put in prison they want him to remain there as long as they want let me quickly add this people of god zedekiah was the king but he doesn't have the authority to set a uh, uh, jeremiah free completely so jeremiah will remain there because his faith jeremiah's faith was in the hand of the princes of the court his faith was in the hands of the princes those were the people that were in charge there zedekiah was the king but had no absolute right to let him go but let's look at what the bible says in romans chapter 8 romans chapter 8 from verse 33 to 34 in Romans chapter 8, from verse 33 to 34, this is what the Bible says. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is the Lord that justified. In verse 34, in verse 34, uh, the Bible says here that who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Let me say this, people of God. Yes, for those of us that were children of God, Christ had risen on our behalf. Nobody can condemn us because Christ has justified us. It was Him that went to the cross for us, it was Him that resurrected, and it is Him that sat at the right hand of God that is making intercession for us yes surely they will gather yes surely yes our adversary will try and try to put things together but let it be known that christ is continuously making intercession for us but let us have this understanding so when we are talking about stigmatization spiritually it means people are being treated unfairly people are being alienated people are being rejected people are being ostracized a lot of believers go through situations and it makes them to be isolated it makes them to be focusing on a project on a challenge when i say project i'm talking about challenge it makes them to focus on a challenge that want to redefine or that has already redefined their life they put that there just to st stigmatize the person as we go into this message you will have understanding so having said that let me say this in real life situation one of the consequences of being incarcerated is is that that person will be stigmatized if anybody has spent time in the jail if anybody has been an ex-convict an ex-inmate when the person is released from the prison oh yes the person goes around uh, with the stigma of an ex-inmate of an ex-convict the society rejects the society does not willingly accept uh, that kind of people why because of their past uh, because of their past nobody wants to be associated with them but spiritually speaking now when it comes to spiritual matters it is different 
when we are talking about stigmatization, anyone that is under the judgment of partition, they will face challenges, circumstances, ailment, afflictions that will stigmatize them in the society to the extent that such person will be distracted from pursuing the main purpose of their life. And this is how it is different. Yes, spiritually speaking, when somebody is stigmatized, they put something on him. Something that makes almost everybody to run away from that person. Something that makes people not to be associated with them. Why? Because they are under the judgment of perdition. Because they have gathered together in the coven. Why? Because they have made a decision. That's why the Bible says that the kings of the earth, together with the rulers, they came together, they took cancer together against the elect of the Lord. And they say, let us uh, break him down. So when they gather together, they put a situation in people's life that makes them to be isolated from the society. Let's look into the Bible so that we can have a, a better understanding. Let's look into the Bible. In Acts of Apostle, this was an example of somebody that had been stigmatized by situation. In Acts of Apostle, Acts of Apostle chapter 3, verse 2. Acts of Apostle chapter 3, uh, verse 2. And the Bible says, And a certain man, lame, from his mother's womb. Please let's pay attention. A certain man, we do not know the true identity. We do not know the full identity of this man. But he was described as a certain man. He was lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that enter into the temple. Look at this very verse of Acts of Apostles chapter 3 verse 2. A certain man, the true identity, the full description of him, we don't know. But there's one thing that we knew, that we know about this man. There's one thing that we know about him. This certain man was lame. He was crippled from his mother's womb. They carry him daily, day in, day out. Day in, day out. He is a man, a certain man, meaning that he's not a babe, he's not a boy, he's not a young person. He has been in that condition, been lame from birth, from his mother's womb. He has been in that predicament. He has been in that situation. He has been in that situation for long. And they took him back and forth to ask for arms. Let me say this, people of God. This is a very perfect example. A situation has redefined him to the extent that his name did not come, come up here in this passage. A certain man, crippled, lame from his mother's womb, and they put him there. Let me say this, people of God. I don't know what you are going through, but if there's any situation, if there's any circumstance that want to redefine your purpose in life, if there's any battle that you are going through that want to rewrite your story negatively, I pray tonight by the power in the name of Jesus that the Lord will overrule them and annul them in the name of Jesus. In that same passage, in verse 6, in verse 6 of this same passage, yes, on that day, the situation of that man was overruled and annulled. When Peter met him, Peter looked into the same man. He says, yes, silver I got. He said, I have none. But that such that I have, I give in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. The situation of that man was overruled and annulled. The judgment of, creep, of cripple, the verdict from the pit of hell that came upon his life, that made him to be born lame, that situation was overturned. Why am I saying this? That it was not meant for that man to die as a cripple, though he was born crippled. But God has ordained it that there is a time of expiration for his lameness. The day he met Peter, that was the day his lameness, that was the day his cripple came to an end. So I pray for somebody, regardless of the judgment that has been put upon anybody, regardless of that situation that you are going through, 
as Peter said on that day, that gold and silver he doesn't have, but that which he has, he gave unto this man. I too, I speak to you tonight, that gold and silver I have none, but that which I have in Christ Jesus, I give unto you. So I pray for you at this very hour. Every destiny that has remained lame, every situation that has, that has held you behind, every challenge of life that has crippled your destiny, I command them at this hour. Oh yes, let them be annulled now. Let them be revoked now. In the name of Jesus, let them be annulled now. Let them be revoked now. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Every destiny that has been buried by situation that has taken away your focus in life, every situation, every judgment of perdition that has reduced or that has attempted to reduce you to nothing, but the power in the name of Jesus, they shall be disgraced tonight now. They shall be disgraced tonight now. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Hallelujah. So, let's look at another example. And what we are saying is this, that when somebody is under the judgment of partition, they put an endless project in his life. They put a situation that takes his focus away from what matters in life. And they allow him to be stigmatized with that situation. This particular example in Acts for Apostles that we read, we don't know the name of the man. But we knew that he was lame. He was crippled. But let's look at another example before we start praying. Let's go to the book of Luke. Luke, the gospel of Luke, chapter 13. Gospel of Luke, chapter 13. Hallelujah. Let's look at verse 10 to 11. Luke, chapter 13, from verse 10 to 11. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. But look at verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could no wise lift up herself. Let's go back to verse 10 again. Uh, okay, stay there in verse 11. You can see again, this situation is similar. There was a woman. We don't know her true identity. We don't know her, we don't know her name. But there was something that we know about her life. We now know that he had the spirit of infirmity. We know that he had that situation for 18 years. We also know that this man was bent, bent for 18 years. He, she could not stand up straight. And she was in that situation for 18 years. This is a very perfect example of anyone that they have placed on judgment of perdition upon. Yes, that yes, they become stigmatized. Everybody knew this woman for 18 years. They may not know her name, but they know that she had the spirit of infirmity. They know that the woman that is bent, her situation had become unique. And they put that stigma upon her. Everybody that goes around knows her. And this story was similar to the woman with the EU of blood too. The woman with the EU of blood. Nobody knew her true identity. We don't know her name, but we knew that she was a woman that had the issue of blood that constantly this woman bleed. It has become an endless project. The woman suffered under the heavy judgment and she carried that predicament everywhere she went until she met with the Lord. But this uh, chapter that we're reading, let's go to verse 12 of this same chapter that we are in. In verse 12, and the Bible says, And Jesus saw this woman and called her to him and said unto the woman, Thou art loosed from thy infirmity. But look at what happened in verse 13. In verse 13, right away, and he laid his hand on her. And immediately, immediately, she was made straight and glorified God. This is what our God can do. The situation of that woman, the verdict or the judgment that was placed upon her life by sickness, that verdict was revoked. That verdict was annulled. So I pray for somebody. Oh, yes, it does not really matter whether you are a man or a woman. It does not really matter how long you have been in this situation. 
but I pray for you now. Anyone under the judgment of perdition and you are going through any sickness in the body and you are going through infirmity and you are going through oppression, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Thou art loose now in the name of Jesus. You are free from that infirmity now in the name of Jesus. You are free in the name of Jesus. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. That situation that has limited you, that situation that has become an endless project in your life, that situation that has stigmatized you. Oh, people know about it. Oh, people talk about it. I pray that situation will not redefine your destiny. I pray. I put a permanent end now. Oh, yes. I Terminate that judgment of perdition upon your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit divine. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. What are the red flags? What are the things that we must look into? We'll look at three things tonight based on the passage that you have read. What are the things that you must pay attention to? What are the red flags that shows if somebody is being stigmatized, if somebody is under spiritual stigmatization, what are the three red flags that will show if a person is under spiritual stigmatization? Number one thing that you want to know is that such person is always helpless. Such person, help is always far away from that person. I give you an example. The man by Bethesda pool in John chapter 5. In John chapter 5, the man by the Bethesda pool, he has been in that situation for 38 years. And when our Lord Jesus Christ saw him and said, Man, would you like to be healed? He said, Sir, I don't have anybody to help me and push me into the pool. So when somebody is under the judgment of perdition. Help will be far away from that person. Yes, regardless of what the person does, he, won't be able, he or she won't be able to find help. But I pray for you tonight. You have found help. Christ, our, pres our, our, our help at the time of need, our very present help in the time of need is going to help you tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, Let's move forward again. Remember, the passage that we have read, Jeremiah was also helpless. They put him in the dungeon. His faith was in the hand of the princes of the court. Even though, uh, I mean, King Zedekiah came to him to hear the revelation from God. But the only thing he could do was to say, okay, moving from this, from this prison, moving to another one. But I pray for you. Concerning you, you have found help tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number two, number two red flag that we must pay attention to. Number two red flag. If anyone is under the judgment of stigmatization from the pit of hell, yes, that situation, that situation the person is going through will become a spiritual parasite. That situation will be feeding on this person's resources. Will be feeding on this person's uh, uh, endeavors. It becomes a parasite. A parasite feeds on the host until it destroys the host. But I pray for you, you shall prevail. You shall not be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Why are we saying this? Despite the fact that they put Jeremiah in the dungeon, they put him in the prison, yet they still dependent on him to consult God for them. The king went to him. Can you please tell us the mind of God? And they were like parasite. They couldn't do anything. But they are taking the best out of Jeremiah. And they put him into a horrible situation that the prophet of God cried. And said, please don't take me back where I was. So I pray for somebody tonight. That today, by the power in the name of Jesus, today is the end of that situation. That situation that is feeding upon your joy. That is feeding upon your finances. That is feeding upon your health. That is feeding upon your joy. The Lord Almighty God will terminate them in the name of Jesus. Amen. And lastly, uh, another red flag 
that we're going to quickly talk about before we start praying is that if anyone is under the judgment of perdition, the person experiences spiritual isolation. The person experiences spiritual isolation. Hallelujah. Thank God for Peter that when he was going to the temple at the hour of prayer, he saw the layman. The layman did not enter into the temple. All that matters was for him to stay at the gate and receive arm. People begin to give him coins. They begin to give him money that he can feed. But he did not discover the spiritual liberty. He stayed at that gate. He became spectators when people are going into the temple and they are receiving blessing. So most people in that condition, because of the judgment that is upon them, they are isolated from where they can get help. They are spiritually isolated. They stayed at the gate. They never entered. They stayed there. The man by the pool of Bethesda too, he too was there too. He was there. He made an effort, but he had no one. He had no one to drag him into the pool. Even when he met with our Lord Jesus Christ, he did not recognize our Lord Jesus Christ. He was full of complaints and this and that. They, are, they were spiritually isolated. But thank God for God that our Lord Jesus Christ said, you know what? Rise up, take up your mat, rise up and be healed. So I want you to pay attention. That situation that you are going through, Oh, yes, thank God for that situation. But you need to run to the Lord. You need to run and embrace the Lord. You need to cry unto the Lord like the blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus was blind for several years. But he heard that Jesus Christ, the son of David, was just passing through Jericho. And he cried unto the Lord because he understood that if he misses that opportunity, if Christ Jesus should pass through, and he didn't come back. He will have died as a blind man. Are you ready to cry unto the Lord tonight? Are you ready to cry unto him? Because the Bible says, as many that call upon him, the Lord will by no means cast them away. As many that call it upon his name, they shall be saved. So as you call upon the Lord tonight, you'll be saved tonight. You'll be delivered tonight in the name of Jesus. Let us rise up. Let us rise up as we prepare ourselves to begin to pray. Let us rise up. Let us rise up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to go before the Lord in the name of Jesus. Go before the Lord. Say, thank you, Holy Spirit divine. Oh, yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit divine, for day two, fasting and praying. At the end of this season, I shall come forth and testify and testify to your goodness in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. Oh, yes. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit divine, I thank you, Lord Almighty God for day two of this fasting and praying program at the end of this season. Oh yes, my household and I we shall come forth. We shall testify to your goodness in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that this season, Lord Almighty God, every judgment of perdition, he yield concerning my life, he yield concerning anything that has to do with me, Lord Almighty God, they shall be annulled and revoked tonight. In the name name of Jesus, I shall come back and testify of your goodness concerning me, concerning the church of God. I shall come back, Father, and testify to the goodness of the Lord concerning everyone that is praying tonight in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Beloved, those of us at home tonight, please, I want us to take this prayer serious. I want us to pray more. I want us to rise up. Don't just sleep on your bed. Rise up and make sure you pray effectively. Go before the Lord. Say, I uproot. I uproot and destroy. I uproot and destroy. Organize conspiracy against me and my household in the name of Jesus uproot them, uproot them, destroy them I uproot and destroy it. oh yes, I uproot and destroy organized conspiracy against me and my household in the name of Jesus I uproot them now I uproot them now I uproot them now I uproot them now every organized conspiracy oh yes, against me every organized conspiracy oh yes, to put judgment of 
partition concerning my life, I uproot them. I destroy them. I uproot them. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus, people of God, oh yes, uproot them, uproot them, uproot them, destroy them. Every organized arrangement, oh yes, attempting to put judgment of partition upon my life, uproot them, destroy them, uproot them, destroy them, uproot them, destroy them, uproot them, destroy them. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit divine. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, they are destroyed. Amen. Let's take the next one like this. With your mighty hands, O Lord, with your mighty hands, O Lord, deliver me from the judgment of perdition, dungeon, where I have been forgotten. In the name of Jesus, with your mighty hands, O Lord, deliver me and my household from the judgment of perdition and dungeon where I have been forgotten. Deliver me, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, dungeon of perdition. Oh, yes, judgment of perdition in the, in the dungeon. Father, Lord, deliver me. I shall not be forgotten. Oh, yes, my matter, Lord Almighty God, Oh, yes, we get the attention of the Lord tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pray, 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 pray. In the name of Jesus, oh, with your mighty hands, oh, Lord, deliver me, Lord. Deliver me, Holy Spirit divine, from the judgment of perdition in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray. Pray, 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 pray in the name of Jesus. With your mighty hands, O Lord, deliver me from the judgment of perdition dungeon where I have been forgotten. Oh, yes, in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, deliver me, deliver me, deliver me, deliver me, deliver me. I want you to pray, more people of God. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit divine. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go before the Lord. Let us pray. Thou mighty hands of God. Thou mighty hands of God. Empower and release my helpers to carry out their divine mandate in my life and household in the name of Jesus oh yes oh yes thou mighty hands of God empower and release my helpers to carry out their divine mandate in my life in the name of Jesus Holy Spirit divine strengthen empower and release my helpers let them be able to carry out oh yes that divine mandate concerning me and my household Oh yes, in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Mighty hand of God, in the name of Jesus, empower and release my assigned divine helpers that they be able to carry out their divine mandate concerning me. In the name of Jesus, I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit divine. I pray this day, this night, Father, and power and release all my helpers that they'll be able to do that which you have committed to their hands father oh yes every assignment that the lord has committed into the hands of my helper father holy spirit divine empower them endow them that they'll be able to carry it out oh yes in the name of jesus empower them holy spirit divine and Power them, Holy Spirit divine, that they'll be able to carry it out, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, I want you to be specific in your prayer. That situation you are trusting the Lord for, wherever your helper is, ask the Lord, thou mighty hands of God, empower and release my helpers to carry out that divine assignment and mandate concerning me and my household. Pray, 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 pray. Ask the Lord, ask the Lord, ask the Lord, ask the Lord. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus, let the name of the Lord be glorified. Thank you, Holy Spirit divine. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let's take the next one like this. Unfavorable circumstance and predicaments. Unfavorable circumstance and predicaments. 
attempting to overshadow my glory be annulled and overruled by the blood of Jesus. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus, every unfavorable circumstance and predicament, every unfavorable, oh yes, circumstance and predicament attempting to overshadow my glory be annulled and overruled by the blood of Jesus. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus, every negative situation, oh yes, that want to overshadow my purpose in life. Every unfavorable predicament that want to overshadow the glory of God upon my life be annulled and overruled by the blood of Jesus. Be annulled and overruled by the blood of Jesus. Oh yes, every unfavorable situation, it does not really matter how long it's been there. It does not really matter what the situation is. But I pray tonight, every unfavorable circumstance and predicament attempted to overshadow my joy, attempted to overshadow my purpose in life, be annulled, be overruled by the blood of Jesus. Be annulled, be overruled. Oh yes, by the blood of Jesus. Be annulled and overruled by the blood of Jesus. I want you to pray in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, my purpose, my glory, oh yes, in the name of Jesus shall not be overshadowed. Oh yes, oh yes, shall not be overshadowed by the judgment of perdition. In the name of Jesus, my purpose, my destiny, oh yes, in the name of Jesus shall not be redefined by any, by any negative situation. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus, every unfavorable circumstance and predicament attempted to overshadow my glory, be annulled and overruled by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit divine. In Jesus' mighty name, they are overruled. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's take the next one. Let's pray. Every spiritual parasite, every spiritual parasite feeding on my glory, and endeavors be roasted now. Be roasted. Be roasted by raw fire of God. In the name of Jesus, I want you to be specific now. Every spiritual parasite feeding on my glory and endeavor concerning my joy over my children be roasted by the raw fire of God. Be roasted. Be roasted. Be roasted. Be roasted by the raw fire of God. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Pray, 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 pray. Pray, 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 in the name of Jesus, every spiritual parasite. Oh, yes, feeding upon my glory, feeding upon my endeavor, be roasted by raw fire of God. Command them now. It does not matter what the situation is, whatever it is, medical, physical, spiritual, marital. Every spiritual parasite feeding upon my glory in my marriage. Every spiritual parasite feeding upon my glory and endeavor in this land be roasted now by the raw fire of God I want you to pray be roasted be roasted be roasted by raw fire of God be roasted be roasted be roasted by raw fire of God be roasted be roasted be roasted by raw fire of God oh yes in the name of Jesus every spiritual parasite attempting or feeding on my glory and endeavor your time is up be roasted by the fire of God be roasted by the fire of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit divine. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, they are roasted. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's take the, one, the next one like this. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, equip and embody my helpers to locate me at the time of my need. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pray this one very well beloved. Yes that your helper. Must be strengthened. Must be equipped. So that they can locate you. When it matter most. Go before the Lord. Lord Jesus. Equip and embody my helpers. To locate me. At the time of need. Oh yes in the name of Jesus. Oh yes equip them. Embody 
in there might help us. Oh, yes, in the name of Jesus, let them locate me at the time of my need. Oh, yes, in the name of Jesus, let them locate me at the time of my need. In the name of Jesus, oh, yes, equip and burden and power might help us. Let them locate me at the time of my need. Oh, yes, pray, 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 pray. My helpers will not be locked up in the jail at the time of my need. In the name of Jesus, your helper will not be sick. In the name of Jesus, at the time you need him, he will not be sick. He will not be on the sick bed. In the name of Jesus, your helper will not be kidnapped at the time you needed him most. In the name of Jesus, oh yes, I want you to pray. Your helper will not be afflicted at the time that you need him most. In the name of Jesus, be it a corporation, be it an organization, be it human being, your helpers will not be distressed at the time you need them most. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus, I want you to pray. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus, that your character will not be damaged at the time you need your helpers most. In the name of Jesus, go before the Lord. Lord Jesus, equip and embolden my helpers to locate me at the time of my need. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. I pray for somebody tonight that your helper will not be blind spiritually at the time he needs to locate you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for somebody tonight. Every spiritual veil that is covering the eyes of your helpers by the power in the name of Jesus will tear them down tonight. In the name of Jesus, your helper will locate you at the time of your need. Holy Spirit divine, equip and burden my helpers. Let them locate me at the time of my need. Let them locate everyone praying tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit divine. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let's take number eight. People of God, don't be tired. We have a few more to go. Go before the Lord and declare, Oh heaven, oh heaven, Oh heaven, oh heaven, I make a demand in the name of Jesus. Judgment of perdition that has become stumbling stone in the journey of my life. Be another and overruled in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray, people of God. Oh, yes, in the name of Jesus. Oh, heaven, oh, heaven. I make a demand in the name of Jesus. Judgment of perdition that has become stumbling stone in the journey of my life. Be annulled, be overruled, be annulled, be overruled. Be annulled, be overruled, be annulled, be overruled, be annulled, be overruled. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit divine, oh yes, begin to overrule them. Every judgment of perdition that has become hindrance, that has become hindrance in the journey of my life, oh yes, be overruled, be annulled, be overruled, be annulled, be overruled, be annulled. In the name of Jesus, every verdict from the pit of hell that has put spiritual checkpoints in my on the journey of my life i pull them down in the name of jesus i pull them down in the name of jesus thank you thank you thank you thank you holy spirit divine in jesus mighty name they are overruled amen hallelujah i want us to pray tonight Go before the Lord. Say, midnight raiders and harvesters. Midnight raiders and harvesters. Carrying out the mandate of perdition over my life. I revoke your evil mandate by fire of God. Oh, yes, in the name of Jesus, every midnight, midnight raiders and harvesters that are carrying out the mandate of perdition over my life, over my household, over the church of God, I revoke your evil mandate. Be revoked now by fire, by fire. Be revoked now. Oh, yes, in the name of Jesus, midnight raiders and harvesters. Oh, yes, carrying out the mandate of perdition.
condition. Oh, by my life, be revoked now. Oh, yes, I revoke the evil mandate by fire of God. Midnight Raiders, Midnight Raiders, they are power that uses the power of the night to operate. Oh, yes, they don't operate during the day. When you are asleep, they begin to raid, they begin to harvest, they begin to carry out the mandate of perdition. But tonight, that mandate will be revoked by fire of God. Go before the Lord, midnight raiders and harvesters. Oh, yes, carrying out the mandate of perdition over oh, my life. Oh, yes, I revoke the evil mandate by fire of God. Revoke them, cancel them, annul them, reverse them, undo them. Oh, yes, in the name of Jesus, revoke them now. Every midnight raider that is walking at night, every midnight harvester carrying out mandate of perdition over your life, over any of your children. Oh, yes, we revoke that evil mandate now. Oh, yeah, by the fire of God, by the blood of Jesus, we undo them now. We revoke them now. We annul them down. Thank you, Holy Spirit divine. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Take the next one like this. I want you to declare with fire in your truth. Say, I refuse to be isolated. I refuse to be isolated. Monitoring agents and devices. Enforcing spiritual isolation around me. Be annulled and overruled. By the blood of Jesus, I refuse to be isolated. Oh, yes, in the name of Jesus, I refuse to be isolated. Monetary agents and devices enforcing, enforcing spiritual isolation around me be annulled and overruled by the blood of Jesus. Be annulled and overruled by the blood of Jesus. I refuse to be, uh, to be isolated. Monetary agent and devices enforcing spiritual isolation around me be annulled be overruled by the blood of jesus be annulled be overruled by the blood of jesus be annulled be overruled by the blood of jesus be annulled be overruled by the blood of jesus be annulled be overruled by the blood of jesus thank you holy spirit divine in jesus mighty name they are overruled amen Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. Say powers and personalities. Powers and personalities. Using counterfeit mandates to collect proceed of my prayer and hard work. I annul and overrule the mandate in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, declare. Oh yes, Holy Spirit divine. Powers and personalities using counterfeit mandate to collect proceed of my prayer and hard work. I annul and overrule that, ma that mandate. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus, annul it, overrule it, annul it, overrule it, annul it, overrule it. In the name of Jesus. Oh yes, powers and personalities using counterfeit Mandate to collect proceed of my prayer and hard work. I annul and overrule that mandate in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, in the name of Jesus, the proceed of my prayer shall, uh, shall, shall manifest in my life. The proceed of my hand work shall manifest in my life. Every power personality, you say counterfeit mandates to collect the proceed before. In the name of Jesus, I nullify, I overrule the, the mandate in the name of jesus thank you holy spirit divine in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen let's take the next one like this there's a dotted line here for those of us joining us for the first time there's the dotted line there meaning that insert your desire go before the law oh yes whatever represents spiritual parasite in my business, in my marriage, in my calling, be roasted alive by raw fire of God in the name of Jesus. Anything that represents spiritual parasite in my health, in my marriage, in my finances, in my calling, be roasted, be roasted, be roasted alive by raw fire.
fire of God. Whatsoever constitutes, oh yes, spiritual parasite in my endeavor, be roasted, be roasted, be roasted, be roasted, be roasted, be roasted, but the fire of God, be roasted, be roasted. By the fire of God, be roasted, be roasted. By the fire of God, be roasted alive. By the raw fire of God, whatsoever that is acting as parasite in my life, let them be roasted alive. By the raw fire of God, enough is enough. Whatever that is operating as spiritual parasite concerning anything that has to do with me, let them be roasted alive. By the raw fire of God, be roasted. Be roasted by the raw fire of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit divine. In Jesus' mighty name, they are roasted. Amen. We have two more prayers, beloved. Let us gather our strength. Let us declare. Say, I am all and overrule. I annul and overrule. Judgment of perdition meant to derail agenda of God in my life. I annul them and overrule them. Pre, 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 Oh yes, in the name of Jesus, I annul and overrule. Judgment of perdition meant to derail agenda of God from my life. Annul them now. Annul them now. Annul them now. In the name of Jesus, any judgment of partition that is capable of derailing the agenda of God for my life, I annul them. I overrule them. I annul them. I overrule them. I annul them. I overrule them. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit divine. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We have one more after this. I want you to declare mandate and judgment of perdition. Mandate and judgment of perdition. Silently waiting for the activation date and instructions. I revoke and annul the evil mandate. In the name of Jesus, every mandate and judgment of perdition. Silently waiting for the activation date and instructions. In the name of Jesus, I revoke the evil mandate. Oh yes, it shall not come to pass. It shall not be activated. In the name of Jesus, oh yes, in the name of Jesus, I destroy the activation instruction. Oh yes, in the name of Jesus, I destroy the activation date. In the name of Jesus, mandate and judgment of perdition, silently waiting for the activation date and instruction. I revoke the evil, the evil mandate. I revoke them in the name of Jesus. Thank you Holy Spirit divine. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Beloved this is the last prayer for tonight. I want us to pray this. Let us pray this now. Go before the Lord. Say whether the enemy likes it or not. Whether the enemy likes it or not. I am cleansed from all unseen stigmas by the blood of Jesus. Oh, begin to pray now. Whether the enemy likes it or not, I, Henry wrote to me, Fakwade, I am cleansed from all unseen stigmas by the blood of Jesus. Every sp spiritual stigma, oh yes, hindering the purpose and the agenda of God for me. Every spiritual stigma that is causing delay in the journey of my life. Every spiritual stigma that is hindering my brother my prayer but the blood of Jesus I am cleansed now in the name of Jesus I am cleansed father in the name of Jesus they shall rise no more in the name of Jesus they shall rise no more in the name of Jesus thank you Holy Spirit divine in Jesus mighty name we are cleansed amen hallelujah amen I want to thank the Lord tonight for day two of our fasting and praying program. And we thank God for all of you that are online with us tonight. Uh, tomorrow is another time for us by 8 p.m. Uh, this video is available on YouTube right away. Uh, you can go back and rewatch it. But be your brother's keeper for this video to a friend of yours. 
encourage them uh, to join tomorrow and this will continue but don't let's forget that this saturday by the grace of god we are not going to do a, a father's prayer by 8 p.m but we are coming to church we are coming to church by 5 p.m to 8 p.m for confront and conquer if you have not invited you are yet to invite anybody for the program please forward the flyer tonight confront and conquer is on saturday by 5 p.m we start right away by 5 p.m to 8 p.m and by the grace of god on sunday it's going to be a glorious service it's going to be the anointing service on sunday please come and let us come and worship the lord it shall be well with us in jesus name let me pray for us as we go tonight let us pray heavenly father i thank you tonight for this wonderful opportunity lord for day two I want to thank you, Lord Almighty God, for putting the enemy to an open shame. Holy Spirit divine, thank you, Lord, for terminating the spiritual stigma that has been put upon our life. Holy Spirit divine, I pray, Lord, any spiritual stigma that is feeding upon anyone's effort, any spiritual stigma that is feeding upon your endeavor, let them be disgraced tonight in the name of Jesus. Let them be rendered useless in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for somebody tonight. Anyone operating under marital stigma, any spiritual marital st uh, stigma that is affecting the, your purpose in life, anyone operating under spiritual stigma concerning their health, concerning their finances, concerning your status in this land, every spiritual stigma that is upon you, but the power in the name of Jesus, I revoke them now in the name of Jesus. I annul them in the name of Jesus. I cancel them in the name of Jesus. Instead of reproach, you shall receive double honor tonight in the name of Jesus. You shall receive double honor going forward in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone trusting the Lord for the fruit of the womb, every satanic verdict, every satanic verdict that has been issued against your womb. I command the verdict now. Be reversed now. Be reversed now. Be reversed now. Be annulled now. In the name of Jesus. I pray for somebody tonight. Is there any, any destiny here that has remained crippled? That the verdict from the pit of hell has crippled the journey of your life? Oh yes, Father. I pray concerning this fellow. That verdict that has been put upon your life. That verdict that has been put upon your children. That verdict that has been put upon your marriage. That verdict that has been put concerning your brain. If you are a student, I reverse. I annul. I undo them. I overrule them now. But the power in the name of Jesus. Rise up and shine. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. For the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Oh, yes, in the name of Jesus. I no more reproach unto you now. I cancel. I overrule and annul. Anything that is not cooperating with the purpose of God in your life I overrule them I annul them in the name of Jesus I mark you with the glory with the blood of Jesus I release unto you the glory of the Lord for excellence receive it now in the name of Jesus receive it now in the name of Jesus perfect understanding that situation that has crippled everyone around you in your family that situation that has crippled your vision in the name of jesus let your vision now receive strength now let your vision now receive clear vision now in the name of jesus let that vision that purpose of yours that dream of your life now let them receive divine empowerment now in the name of jesus go and fulfill your purpose in life in the name of lord the father the son and of the holy spirit the burden is lifted the yoke is destroyed in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen praise the lord hallelujah let us share the grace that the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. For what the Lord has done on this day too, 
victory victorious hallelujah unto the lord one to go hallelujah 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 god bless you thank you for joining us tonight see you tomorrow night by the grace of god 8 p.m send the link to somebody god bless you as you do that in jesus name amen thank you for listening to this message we invite you to visit us at www.christsupreme.ca for more spirit-filled messages and for more information about the church you can also call us at 647-884-8494 god bless you